weiß Bescheid. Welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Today, we have a special episode. And you guys are probably tired of, of hearing me say that. <laughs> but it's true. This episode is going to be the first episode interview episode that we have on our podcast so typically the majority or all of our interviews have been on the live show itself so if you have tuned in on youtube facebook linkedin twitter and you have caught our live episodes then you would you know understand you know how we do and the kind of energy that the live show has right and the podcast has been more of a solo episode with me, you know, trying to drop as many gems as I possibly can for you guys to pick up on. But today, what we've done is we did an interview with the Carib Shopper CEO, Katie and Preston. We did this live show on August 3rd, 2021. And because of how the format was, where it wasn't uh, too visual, it was a really, really good conversation. Uh, we can take that live session that we did and we could put it up on the Digipreneur FM podcast platform. So I definitely want the the podcast family to hear this episode because it's fu funny enough, most of the time, the people that listen to the podcast are not necessarily the people that watch the live show and vice versa, right? And I mean it's almost it's one community it's one digipreneur community but everybody has you know their preferred ways of tuning in um to the content so i think it would be it, i think it's pretty pretty dope to be able to take uh the session that we did with katie and preston and bring it to the the audio only podcast family right so Without further ado, this episode is going to be that session that we recorded with Katie and Preston from Carib Shop, and we're going to be talking about Caribbean exportation, you know, getting our Caribbean-made products into countries like Canada, uh, Canada, the U.S., the U.K. Uh, we've, we also touched on the the elephants in the room, Amazon coming into the Caribbean, making that big announcement. You know, what does that mean for the Caribbean region on the whole? And what does it mean for, for Caribbean product producers to be able to now uh, fully access the giant, the e-commerce giant that is Amazon? And then we also talked about uh, a bit of his entrepreneurship journey as someone who migrated from Jamaica and going over to the U.S. to build uh, what we now know as Carib Shopper. So it's a really good it's a really good episode. Um, definitely some gems in there. So take some notes. And if you guys can check out Carib Shopper, the link will be in the, in the show notes. If you are somebody who makes products, Carib Shopper is definitely a platform to list your businesses on, to list your business on and get your products out there. And it's not a situation of if you list on Carib Shopper, you can't list on other platforms. You could definitely utilize as many platforms as you can responsibly manage. But Carib Shopper just does so much for Caribbean businesses that it's definitely worth checking out and getting your products listed. All right. So without further ado, let us dive into the interview with Katie and Preston. Tonight, it's all about Caribbean exportation. Getting Caribbean made products into 
the international markets, taking our businesses online, getting our products out there, building our brands. And we have none other than a platform that's going to help you do it. Because one of the biggest challenges that we face is for the regular, you know, small, medium-sized businesses, the micro businesses, being able to get their products um, online. But then you also have to deal with the payments. Then you got to deal with the... You got to deal with the, uh, the, the, the logistics side of it. And not everybody either has the know-how or wants to be able to, you know, you know, learn how to string and put all of these pieces together to get their business in a nice, in a nice, in a nice orderly fashion so that the customer experience is, is a good one. So nonetheless, my name is Karen Rose. If this is your first time tuning in, I thank you for joining the program. Folks, you guys know how we do. If you are inside the program tonight, please show yourself. Let me know that you guys are here. The first comment from tonight. Listen, I, I need to know how to say your name. I want to say it's tiny. It could be tine. It could be teeny, tiny. I, I could, I'm, I'm guessing now. But good night. How are you? I hope all is well. You guys, definitely let me know in the comments. Let me know that you guys are here. Let me know where you guys are watching from. We got to do our, our roll call. Are you watching from Grenada? Are you watching from Guyana, St. Vincent, St. Kitts? Are you in Jamaica? Are you in Trinidad and Tobago? Are you in the U.S.? Are you in Canada? Are you in the U.K.? Let me know in the comments. Where are you watching from? You see? Good. Tanessa. Good night, Tanessa. Glad you cleared that up for me. Michelle Baptiste. Good night. First time, Michelle. Glad to have you live in the program. Squeeze Cash. Vinci Massive inside tonight. Demetrius is checking in from Yard. Yes. I got to go to Yard. I need to get some jerk chicken. But this lockdown, you know, they locked all the good Yardies with the jerk, the, with the jerk chicken outside of Trinidad. I need to get some real jerk chicken in my system. I got I to gotta visit Yard before this, this, this year is done. So once again, if you guys are, you know, now tuning in, tonight it's all about uh, Caribbean exportation. Learning how to get our products, our Caribbean-made products, into the international markets. Learning how to earn U.S. dollars for your products. We're also going to be talking about Amazon. Amazon made their announcement uh, last month that they are here in the Caribbean. We're going to be talking about you know the opportunities that they present, but alongside some of the gaps and the pitfalls that Amazon comes with, and the CEO for the company we're interviewing tonight, they sit in a really good in a really good place to not just get your products, but there are areas where those who are going to be unable or who can't, um, you know, figure out how to leverage the Amazon platform, or maybe they don't have the financial uh, resources to get their products onto the Amazon platform and deal with everything that comes with Amazon. Their company is is really is really situated to pick up a lot of that slack, all right? So folks, without further ado, I want to bring to the stage the CEO of Carib Shopper, the number one exporting company for Caribbean micro, small, and medium businesses for products into the international markets. Let's welcome to the stage Cadian Preston, CEO of Karen Shopper. Come Do that again. I love that, Karen. Go ahead. Drop the bomb. Bang, bang, bang. Come All right. All right. Bro, what's going on, man? The vibes is here tonight, my friend. Yo, it's e- e- of course, man. Anytime, anytime we go live, the vibes. But you see, now the vibes are 10x because the man them like Katie and Preston. Reach the touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to thank you. I want to start off by just thanking you for, for carving out time out of your busy schedule to come in and, and chat with us um, on this topic because it, it, it's a big one. And given the fact that, you know, we are, we are still in the pandemic and we have many of businesses, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what's next, what can they do? Um, and now, and we have so many, Caribbean-made products uh, just here 
just just here, you know. Uh, people are trying to figure out, you know, this online game and how to get their products, you know, outside of just their just their community, but expand that conversation to to some of the global markets. And I mean, you've been on the forefront championing and building out a platform to be able to do that. So again, I thank you for taking the time to to talk to us tonight. My pleasure. My pleasure. So, you know, let's let let's start off with, you know, how has the pandemic, you know, been for you? What are what have as you as an entrepreneur? Because I mean, you don't just wake up and say, yo, this this is the problem I'm going to solve. So, like, you know, what what has it been like? How, what has this pandemic uh what kind of opportunities has it presented for you? What gaps have you seen and and you know, within your own passions, how did how have you looked at this pandemic and the gaps and how do you feel about how do you feel about filling it? So interesting story, Karan. And and since we're on here and it's just me and you, let's get into it. Story time now, right? Uh, Carib Shop was started way before the pandemic. Um, we focused on, on in 2019, uh, my, my co-founder, my brother, we looked at what we call Project Grow Local. And we started working our way through the Caribbean, meeting with merchants, um, meeting with product makers all over, from Jamaica, Trinidad, you name it. And it was to understand their challenges, right? Because one thing, um, Karen, you lived away in Canada for a little bit. <clears throat> I live here in, in Miami before that I lived in, in New York. Um, it's hard staying close to your culture. It's hard getting your cultural products, especially living in certain areas. If you're in Toronto, cool. If you're in New York, cool. If you're in Miami, cool. But if you lived in the city, New York City, you got to take a you got to take a train uptown or downtown to get that to get those Caribbean products. Right. Facts, it's facts, not happening. Right. Facts. And, and for far too long, um, people who have fell in love with the Caribbean and what it has to offer in our amazing product and our culture, more mm -hmm. more importantly, our culture can't get it outside of home. Right. And the problem that we are trying to solve it was was is deeper than just um the commerce aspect of it right right i grew up in a household where <clears throat> you know my mom was an entrepreneur and i saw you know firsthand what it took to grow outside of your border right right and the challenges around that so we started in 2019 um in december funny story after doing a, a lot of product market fit study um in December, we went full steam ahead. We hired a, our head of logistics, which was interestingly my mentor at the time. He was a, a big guy at um, UPS and he had built out the whole cross-border e-commerce with Alibaba in the US. And so he had a lot of experience on cross-border sides. Right. And, you know, I started talking to him just about the challenges of the Caribbean. And he said, listen, I want to work with you guys. I want to tackle that challenge. And that was a, a, a big move for me, I mean, I didn't expect that. I wanted to get a recommendation from him on, on who would be a great candidate for the position. He said him. And right. From there, it just kick-started the movement. And um, I, I got to tell you, we were scared when the pandemic hit and the shutdown started to happen. And in the Caribbean, more than anywhere else, they shut down hard. Borders were locked. Movement was, was, was slowed down. The fear was impacting. Um, and at that point, we were in the stages of building. So our build out looks like onboarding merchants and bringing products on the platform. Um, and that was hectic in, right. in, in March. It was very hectic. I mean, it took us from March till probably November to get up to 300 merchants with over 2000 products in, in, uh, in almost a, a whole year, nine months. So. Um, facing the pandemic was a challenge and we had to do everything remotely. We had to meet, um, explain to, to merchants what we do, how we can benefit them as a new company, you know, as a startup, um, you know, just trying to bring, bring um, manufacturers into the digital age. It wasn't easy. And we had to work <laughs> like pirates to get it done. So, you know, when we did our beta launch in December, it was a good feeling to start right. seeing the the till going off and i should have took a picture of the first sale that happened <laughs> on the platform but i didn't but you know you always remember that first sale you gotta remember that first sale because that's the first win you know yes yeah. it's, 
it's um it's 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 just you know and now to be where we are where um, we're maturing and the growth is is impacting in in, in 2021 um it's just awesome it's awesome feeling no that's and it's cool. hard work but we, we're at it no I, you're absolutely right i mean it, the work never could could never be stated enough. Um, you made you made some you made a point that I don't want to just bypass, right? Um, because I spent so twenty nine years of my life is Toronto, and that's pretty much the majority of what I know, right? But I, I don't want this. To, I don't want us to bypass this. When you talk about the lack of access to Caribbean goods in the U.S., right? You know, what are some of the sentiments that, that people express in the U.S. when it comes to the lack, you know, of, of getting these Caribbean goods? What are some of the things that, you know, people, people say when we, when we have to go hunting <laughs> for the goods? No, man, it's, it's pure joy, right? It's, it's a relief. It's excitement. It brings happiness. Right. Um, you know, you, you see, we, we post up some of the cons- consumer sentiments and you can see it um in our our customer success division just seeing how excited people are just to get something as their favorite cheese or their favorite hair product or or food or whatever it is um so um you definitely get a satisfaction but i think the the biggest satisfaction for me um karen and i think this this goes unsaid it's the caribbean for far too long you know we struggle with cultural confidence right and if 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 you've been around, you'll you'll notice that, you know, they're amazing product makers. We can we can talk about them from now till tomorrow. Right. Who can only sell in in their local market, and they believe they can't expand behind their borders when right. they have customers who love their product, who want their product, people who have visited, whether it's for carnival or it's to the beaches in Jamaica or whatever it is, and tried their product by just association. Right. And, can't get it anywhere, right? Yeah. But it's to see the the excitement on the merchants that changes mm. the game for us. I remember right. a couple a couple uh, two months ago we had a or or less um, we had our first merchant success um, meet the merchants um, session where we brought in our merchants to talk about the new developments of of Carib Shopper and what we're doing for them and how we're going to enhance their their growth and 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 you brought in some speakers who are actual merchants who had different who had you know various experiences and just to hear you know our impact and and how it made them feel right. that was that was the win for us because this would be a community that wouldn't normally get their products into the hands of international people living in Hawaii or Nebraska right. where we've shipped you know what right. I mean? So that that's the win right there. The consumers, that's the brata. But the win is 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 getting merchants that, that product. Yep. That didn't have travel coming in for COVID. Right. And is now selling to a US consumer. Right. And you know, in December we opened up um and tested the Canadian market or getting their products into Canada. Right. That's that's the win right there, my brother. That's oh, that's, that's the good feeling. That's, that's good huge. Feeling. That's huge. Because I tell you this. Yo, growing up in growing up in Toronto, I've had to drive forty five minutes to get Jamaican beef patties <laughs> because there's nowhere to get the products. You know, if if there was a service like this, you know, just a few years ago before I moved to Trinidad, I would have been one of the biggest shoppers on the platform. People. Because we have, I mean, you're, you're in the Caribbean, you're in Trinidad, you're in Jamaica. So, I mean, our products are readily available for us to, to get, right? But how many times, and I think every, every, everybody here in the Caribbean um, can relate to this. How many times have your family member flew into Jamaica, flew into Trinidad and Tobago, and they, they bring an additional suitcase to pack as many goods into their suitcases to carry back up to last them as long as they as long as they can because it's not even just about you know the product it's a piece of home yeah you know yeah. it's a piece of yeah. home at, i think every single time my mom gets some julie mango or some red mango 
and it's it's brought in from somebody that came in from from Trinidad or she got her friends went over to Jamaica and brought her some stuff. The first thing she always says is, you know, I remember the first time I had red mango or I ate, you know, 10 pounds of it or some ludicrous story. It always reminds people back of home and it takes them back to a place. So it's more than just the product. People living away want that taste, want that sentiment of being home. And I think what you've been able to to build where now people can get a taste of home delivered to their door is a huge win for the consumers that are away and they're homesick. But for the merchants, I mean, we're going to dive into that because this is really a business show, but for the merchants, this, this changes, this changes everything. This, yeah. This changes everything. Yeah. And, and so, you, you know, we talk about, you know, just the separation. We're, Carp Shop has been very deliberate in how we go about in everything. So, you know, if you were to classify us, what kind of marketplace we are, we're, we're a cultural commerce. We're cultural commerce, right? Mm, right? Our goal is to inspire cultural confidence, right? So, so many times, like you told me the story of, of that, of that um, young lady who was making, um, I'm trying to remember that product that you were telling me, and she was trying to do her own website and everything like that, but she, probably soaps. <laughs> yeah, soaps. There you go. There you yeah. go. Right? Yeah. right. By the way, beauty products. You guys better get on that. That's a big ticket item, right? Um, and um, you know, to get listed on Carib Shop and sell to our first international customer, that's huge for her, right? Right. Home, she could do on her own. So we were very deliberate that we're only export, right? Right. We were, we were very deliberate that we were only working with the merchants, the manufacturers themselves, right? right? Because we wanted that deep-seated relationship in order to help them to grow. Because our mission is that if if we make them successful by association, we become successful. Right. And that has to, that has to stay true through everything that we do. So right. we're not Amazon where um, you can be an influencer, you, you can resell somebody else's product. Um, you know, we provide a turnkey solution that helps the merchant from start from even like consulting with our merchandising team to on your labeling on how you're positioning on on your product description we know how critical this is in e-commerce and it's 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 things that that in developing this market karan which you know very well because i have to applaud you on what you've been doing in in playing your part in the digital transformation it's it's a new frontier but it's a frontier that people have to take serious it right. goes down to even your product shots. And, you know, as we started getting into it, we had to do product. Sh- we do product shots for our merchants because it, there's a, there's a spe- that's a specialty in itself. It's not just somebody <laughs> who shoot, shoot, Correct. you know, a good looking picture of Keron. It's a product shot is, is specific and people buy with their eyes, right? People buy with their eyes, then what they, what they can see, what they can feel, and then what they can smell. So, at the end of the day, you have to position yourself to win, right? And we've yeah. been teaching merchants how to do that. Yeah. And we've been doing it ourselves. And that's that's a cost to us, but it's a part of the growth. It's a part of the transformation, right? Secondly, on top of that, you know, how we deal with our merchants and how we, and how we, you know, we've made certain, we've, we've understand their challenges and how we're, we're catering to that. Right. It's, it's a more turnkey relationship than the big, you know, giant out there amazon and you know my point to that is i'm not trying to compete with amazon yeah amazon has amazon has its role and i'm happy they finally came to the caribbean 20 years later right <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm really really happy about that because right. for mia motley said this in 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 one of her best speeches which was done like last year um and I, i'm a big fan of her she goes she talks about what the Caribbean needs is cultural confidence. And anybody who haven't watched that um, that press conference that me and Motley did, um, please YouTube um, the, uh, what is it? It was- That's, to that's where she talked about Peter Menschel and she was going yeah, into that. Right, yes, yes, yes. yes. Menschel, yep. That, that, she that speech about, was- Yeah, that speech was, was killer. Yeah. But she spoke significantly about cultural confidence, right? Mm. And the need for it in all our islands and, and the diversity of our culture and how strong it is internationally, right? Right. And our vulnerabilities in 
you know, whether oil being our, our product and the, the the oil game is changing and Trinidad and, and the world is seeing that today, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, for Jamaica, you know, um, tourism is changing, you know, um, COVID showed the, the, the fragility of that of that industry, right? But if you go back to the 70s, right, we were big makers or farmers or makers and it's taking these these assets and transforming them and 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 taking them in, into the into the digital world that we are today is going to be the transformative moves for the Caribbean. We yeah. see it happening right now. Yeah. It was forced on us by COVID, but yeah. if, if if that movement still goes, Karen Rose, Alwyn Wayne, um, Quick Cash, Squeeze Cash, you know, all these technology companies that are creating opportunities now, it's going to it's going to be transformative and our future is tied to that. Yes. So our role in that is to make exports simple, right? Mm. That all the manufacturer has to focus on is making their product. Do a good job at that. Right. We will have, we will do the rest. Right. Right. And if you're a reseller, if you're a businessman, if you're an entrepreneur, Amazon, go Amazon, right? Yeah. Because you can apply to become a merchant, but you're not our, our demographic. You're, right. you're not our. So, you know, I, I, I stress that point because at the core, we all have to focus on cultural confidence and we all have to look at what this new society, the, the, the new economy that we're dealing with and how we partake of it. We can't yeah. be sitting at the same table and expecting greater results. We have to improve. So the transformative era of the digital revolution in the Caribbean is big to me and dear to my heart. And, you know, to be a part of it right now yeah. is is satisfying. Yeah. You know, and it, it's it's so crazy. Um, when, we, when we talk about, you know, cultural confidence, I remember listening to that Mia Motley speech and I was shocked and amazed because I'm like, yo, I can't, I can't relate to some of these things because... Growing up in Canada, all anybody ever wanted to be was Caribbean. Caribbean, The Caribbean folks were always the trendsetters. So to hear, you know, another side, uh, an another perspective talking about we lack the cultural perspective blew my mind because half the Caucasian folks walk around speaking, speaking Patois or they trying to speak cool. Patois. They, they want to be cool. They want to be, cool, be cool, right? They want to be cool. When, when, when fets are happening, when caravana is happening, when New York, when the New York caravana uh, parade is going on, it's not just Caribbean folks. We are of a we are a percentage yeah. in these festivals. Yeah, people want a piece of the Caribbean culture. We hear it in the music. We see it in the way people dress. Mm -hmm. We see in the mannerisms. So again, I grew up in that. I grew up as, yo, we always looked at the Caribbean to set the trend. So again, it's right. just it's just when I heard the, the speech from Mia Motley, I was sitting here confused. Like, what do you mean we need Caribbean confidence? We in, in Toronto, we in Canada, we in North America, we adore the Caribbean. We're trying right. to eat up everything that they give us. But the fact that you have people in our region who don't see that or don't understand or don't know just how bad we are wanted and needed outside of the region, you know, again, it's going to be scary when people start to get that cultural confidence that, that, we, that we are talking about. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's the kicker, right? When we get that and when, and when that settles in, that's going to be um, just a, a game changer, right? If you think about it, you know, when, when when I talk to the team and when we talk to our partners, it's not just a diaspora, mm. right? We have a, a greater market outside of that, right? You, you, I, I, I share a story. We um we connected with a chef in New York that does chocolate pairings and tastings and right. has a whole Zoom thing going on and has a whole bunch of people signed up for training and learning and tasting and and, and, and they reached out to us, you know, from a conference and they said, you know, um, Chef Tova said, you know, I want to try Caribbean chocolate. And uh, we got Caribbean chocolate. We got Trinity chocolate. We got Jamaican chocolate. We got, we sent her a bunch of chocolate. And, and that call, she was like, oh my God, some of the best chocolate I've ever had. Right. Blah, 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 blah. 
blah, 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 blah. And this is a demo. That's this is a demographic. That's not Caribbean. Right. It is different demographic, right? That's now coming up. That's now going to be introduced to or chocolate or Caribbean made product and think it's the bomb. Just like they think soca is is, is the happiest music alive and, and bomb. Just like they think reggae is 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 everything. You know, it's 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 it's, it's it's transient and it's also attractive. Mm. And, and, if, and if merchants, you know, understand that, that you can grow outside of our culture, right? That's our goal. Yeah. We, want the, we want everybody to know about the, the, the awesomeness of the Caribbean, not yeah. just our beach, not just our parties, not just our music, but also our products. Everybody it. has a role in life and that's ours. I love it. I love it. Folks, if you guys are tuning in to the Digipreneur Live show, and you're here live with us. Please let me know in the chat. Let me know. Drop some flames. Let me know that you guys are here. Let me know that you guys are enjoying the chat so far. We have much more to talk about, Katie and Preston. But we're just checking in with you guys. Let us know that you guys are here. Just drop some flames in the chat just to let us know. You guys give us the energy. We give you guys back the energy. And this is how that relationship happens. You guys want to stick around to a bit later on because... The phone lines are going to be open up to, to, to take questions and you guys will be able to ask your questions live. So you don't want to miss that out. Right. All right. So, Kaden, let's 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 get into some of the nitty gritty. Let's let's talk some business, because uh, the most for the most part, the people that tune into the Digipreneur platform are looking to take their businesses to the next level. And they're, you know, micro, they're medium. Heck, we even have government agencies pre in the mandem, you know? So right. everybody tunes in, right? So one of the things that, one of the things I kind of want your perspective of is, you know, what are some of the challenges that you see that Caribbean entrepreneurs face when it comes to getting their products into the U.S. market? What are some of those roadblocks that, that, that happen that kind of, you know, put hurdles in the process and people just say, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to sell on the corner. What, what are some of the challenges that we have to go through when exporting our products. So, so, you know, one, one big problem that we, we've noticed and we're, we're trying to um, solve for it is um, branding, branding and owning, you know, your, your product image. You know, not mm. only that, not only that, right. But um, merchants, you know, have, have, feel they have a lack of resources, feel, and I use the word feel, right? So I give you an example. You know, we've noticed that specific products come in a similar size bottle or similar right. size packaging. And that's because it's what's imported and already there in, the, in, in, in that island, right. right? Not till digging in, like, why this looks so familiar? Like, why this, even though it's a different kind of, why, why that bottle looks so familiar? Right. It's, it's, it's what the it's what the local distributor carries mm -hmm. and it's stuck right and in this digital world you can jump on alibaba i know karen is gonna have an episode and you can jump on alibaba find the product you want read up on read up on that um the the um <clears throat> the uh comments and, and and statistics of that product get a test like it if you don't like it order it receive it build your product and you can do that on repeat because right. the same product you're buying local that is not that you don't have separation on right um is the same one that your competitor is buying right right and so you know people need to people need to to showcase the strength of their brand you know the other day i bought my favorite pepper sauce and i know i'm going to get cost out for this but bertie's is the best bertie's right? Bertie's is the best pepper sauce. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I got to check this out. <laughs> Bertie's. Yeah. And so Bertie's has a three pack. And I was very impressed with their packaging. Very, right. very impressed with their packaging. Right. Um, no disrespect to any other other manufacturers on the platform. I was just impressed. I'm using this as an example. Right. <laughs> right. So it's it. very impressed with their packaging. Right. Clear, packaged well. Um, you know, well done. Right. And, you know, if we start taking that cultural confidence, that, that understanding that we can, you know, 
create not only good products, but we can make them, you know, competitive with our eyes, with the consumer's eyes involved. Changes the game. Changes the game. So one of the big questions that that, that I often ask, because I know when uh like when you're in the States, when you're in when you're in Canada, when you're in the UK, there's a lot of places for you to go to learn how to build a proper brand, especially when it comes to uh, creating a product-based brand, right? What do you think needs to happen in the Caribbean for us to start to, you know, one, pay attention to our, 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 our branding on our products, but, you know, where, where can we go to learn how to build a, a, better, a better product or at least the branding of the product? Where do we go to, where, do we, where can we go to learn? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> YouTube, I mean, the world encyclopedia, right? Mm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, I mean, and, and please give me a perspective on this, Karan. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, having a conversation with our head of marketing and a lot of these programs not bashing again, but this is a real show. So if you don't yeah. like what's said, it is what it is. It is a what it of, is. It is what it is. A lot of, a lot of, the investments from you know different um non-for-profits that have been around in the caribbean for a while have been focused on areas i think that are not practical right so you hear that the development bank has done this and the international development <laughs> bank has done this, and this has done, but they don't have a direct impact on the problem right correct they, they, it just talks about, you know, the trees. It doesn't get into the weeds. And we have to get into the weeds, yeah. right? All of these associations that, that have received grants, have received support, let's, let's, let's really do something. Like right now, I'm very impressed with, with, with you know, what, what <clears throat> the team at Nudge is doing, right, mm. um, in, in Trinidad. You know, right. they're focused on the, on the, on the, the, micro entrepreneur right the person right. that has, has an idea and and, right. and wants to take that to the market and they're helping with branding and different things and um i'm sure there's other small programs out there but these programs are not getting the dollars and the support they need to, to stay alive and to keep growing right. right and to really be supported and of course in this world that we live in if you really want to do something you can find it you can find that information Go to the encyclopedia. It's called YouTube. Yeah, and I mean one of the one of the biggest challenges, though, and this is something that, and this is really where where I got my start was, as much as we have tons of information available to us, uh, I want to say maybe sixty to seventy percent, while good, the information needs to be localized, and we don't have enough entities across the Caribbean, you know, creating localized information. And, and, and it's scary when you're going to some of these institutions and you're trying to figure out, yo, how do I, you know, how do I process payments? And the people you're talking to are like, mm -hmm. but we, you guys, you're working for the company that offers the, the product and service that we need to grow our business. So as much as there is a lot of information out there, we get a lot of information from the U.S. markets and that also leads us down the wrong path. We get a we yep. get a good idea as to what should happen and what it should look like, but then we right. also need more institutions across the region starting to put out that information and create a a, learn, a, a resource center for whatever the space is for Caribbean entrepreneurs to be able to come and learn and 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 really excel because we don't have it. You Google right. most most things you Google comes up with a U.S. content and not something True. that's. Uh, you know, properly built for our market. So I think that's definitely a big gap for us, you know? That is a very big gap. Kadian, so yes, let, let's let's dive into, you know, some of Carib Shopper stuff. So, you know, let walk us through what are the what are the key areas that, that Carib Shopper is looking to solve? Because as much as we're talking about exporting and we kind of touched on some of the, you know, the issues that, that people face along with getting their products in, uh, you do, Carib Shopper does a whole lot more than just getting your product into the market. So what are some of the key areas that you will help, that Carib Shopper helps businesses get their product to market? Cool. So 
you know, outside of being a marketplace and being the number one destination for Caribbean made products, right? And so giving giving the the merchant a place where they can sell their products easily. Right. We help with the complete onboarding, product imagery, product description, the whole nine yards to make you e-commerce ready. We also right set you up that you're able to you know receive your payments in U.S. dollars. You know we're 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 introducing some new supportive services where we even I don't want to talk about it yet, but we're getting ready to launch it. But just look at it this way that we're looking again, we're going back to the mission of the company. Right. And you know, when you're, uh, a, a, when you're the head cook and bottle washer of a company, right. Put, putting in these hours, you, 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 you have to always keep yourself accountable. And, you know, m- me keeping myself accountable is how do we make the merchant successful? Right. Once you stay true to that, right? I don't care if it's Amazon. I don't care if it's eBay. I don't care if it's Alibaba. We will have our own niche in the market. And that and and the trueness of that for us is helping the merchant all throughout the process. Right. In getting e commerce ready and selling their products internationally. So we handle logistics. Mm, right? Talk about it. it. Talk about it. You know, they don't have to pay for logistics. They don't have wow. to pay for payment processing. We handle all of that too, right? We we do the fulfillment of your product. We handle the customer service with issues. Unless the product that is fulfilled from your team is bad or spoiled, right? We handle all of all of that, and we also handle getting your money in your hands in U.S. dollars. Once <laughs> you're able to, once you have a U.S. account or an instrument that we can pay in US dollars because that has been a problem for us. So let's let's talk along. about that. Let's highlight this. Let's slow that down because I need people to understand this, right? One mm-hmm. of the some of the these are some of the critical issues that Caribbean businesses face on a day-to-day basis. When mm-hmm. I go through my uh when I go through my channels, my inboxes, my emails, my DMs, I, I a lot of it's a lot of it is questions around problems that you are solving so the big one is one how do i get my business online do i go via a a website do i join a marketplace but they're a product-based business two so you're solving well you're solving getting your business online because carob shop you're going to be able to have your online store you're going to have a link people can go to that link and shop whatever products you have the second big thing is the payments Oh, God, I fed up. I'm not fed up. I'm just joking. But I fed up of all you asking me about payments. <laughs> but it's a major problem. It is. Listen, one in three messages I get is a payments question. And it's, 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 it's such a big issue because, again, there's a lack of information in the space. And then one, what, what you're starting to realize is that Because a lot of the employees at the institutions are not entrepreneurs themselves, they don't understand the the, the gravity of of the the, the gravity of of, of getting this payment thing solved and allowing people to understand how to take their business online and receive payments, right? So the fact that you guys are solving the payments, so once they are on the Carib Shopper platform, they have the store. Second thing, when people can pay you, you don't have to fret, you don't have to worry about how you are receiving the money or integrating a payment processor because what happens too is that you have people that are building their websites and they build it on a platform that is not caribbean ready you might have access to it so like a great one for example is is squarespace you can use squarespace no problem if you're building you know an information website great but we do not have a caribbean made payment processor that integrates into the platform. So getting paid is a problem. And you'll hear people jump on YouTube, watch a US uh, content creator, talk about how they've built this e-commerce business, go down that road, spend time, spend money, and then realize, wait a minute, I can't get paid. So Carib right. Shopper is solving that, that, that problem for payments. Third, logistics, logistics, logistics. A big one. That is a, you know, and let's kind of dive into that. So, you know, what about the products? Because 
I would imagine and you're going to have more information about this than me. Like how, how, how hard is it to really solve the logistics, the logistics issue for Caribbean businesses in Trinidad and Tobago and in Jamaica? How hard is that problem to solve? I mean, there are various challenges that we've had to go through, right? You know, outside of, of, of building the logistic infrastructure that we have today, um, you know, making sure that your product can be shipped to a door, right? There are many regulations that we have to go through. You know, we have a 3.2 days of turnaround on delivering our product out of the region to any right. door, right? And 3.2? Wow. 3.2. Yep, I'm proud of it. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> so uh, um, it, it, takes, it, it, it takes the commitment of the merchant. Right. Um, it, it takes us understanding. I, you know, just to give an example, I sit on the logistics and trade board for the city of Miami-Dade. So I speak to the you know Port Authority regularly, weekly. I have meetings with them, and that's right. strategic, right? right? That's strategic in understanding the regulations, in moving, in being able to get things done, right? Um, as I said, more exciting things to come. I mean, we're we've tested, you know, cold storage. Caratrapper is moving cold storage product now. Wow. Now, 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 you know, and that's that's not even, I mean, big story. I mean, we're. Or, you know, we have a uh, a DHL partnership out of you know DHL e-commerce division, and and we have a, a FedEx partnership, and we also have a US UPS partnership. Right. Um, and we have a couple more to come. But I remember sitting down with the director of Latin America for for FedEx and saying, "Listen, man, I need to send patties all over the world. I need to send <laughs> ice cream all over the world." I, 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 <laughs> Africans want their patties, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I need to send breadfruit wherever, man. Yeah. I, you know, you know what would make me happy if I can buy doubles off of off of uh, Main Street <laughs> in TT. No, 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 that would just make me very happy. You know, I look at, I look at <clears throat> companies like Gold Belly. Yeah, like that in the US, I will ship your favorite food product anywhere. Right, anywhere. Right, like, um, you know. Junior's cheesecake. I can buy Junior's cheesecake in New York. I have it shipped to my door on Gold Belly, right? Wow. So why can't Carib Shopper do that? So we're right. we're 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 pushing the envelopes, right? Um, and it's not without challenge. It's not without, you know. But the greatest victory is on is on the other side of of, of a great challenge. So yeah, we at the higher it steps up, we got to step up to that challenge and we got to get over that fence, right? Right. Um, and and that's what us as Caribbean people has been built on. It's been built on, uh, we've been built on um, breaking through um, the the barriers that have been put before us. Right. Do, is there, is there um, a limit to what can be exported? Like, so like, let's, let's say if you have people making some, you know, furniture, like what's the limit uh, that you guys can export to, to some of these oh, countries? So so we're getting so now you're getting me real excited like we're we're covering six categories today and we want to expand that right i want to i want to be the place you go for caribbean art i want to be the place you go for these amazing mahogany furniture that i see all the time on instagram that i want to put it in my house and i can't do it right right so we're adding we're we're improving our logistic pro- presence right in order to support that growth um, right you know, there's a company I've been courting for a while that I want their products um, and they make some really cool stuff, you know, and, and maybe one day when I have Keron money, I can go buy some. But before then, I'll just keep admiring them, they, you know, their, their coffee desks and coffee tables and stuff like that. But the goal, right, the goal is that with our success, a 19-year-old coming out of school right. doesn't have to make the decision to migrate to have a career. Yes. If they have a skill, they can make it the, the the brain drain stops, right? They know they can they can live on their their uh, in their home country and and make a living, right? Mm. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to, you know, migrate like Karen did, you know what I mean? Go to Canada and and <laughs> just to make some money. But look at you, you're back home <sighs> and you're showing them that through digital transformation you can make money. You're making money at the comfort of your home. Yeah. You understand? You and chicken are right there. Yeah. 
Yo, my, my mom's watching this right now, and I'm sure she's probably just laughing because we talk about it all the time, you know. She yeah. laughs, and, she, and she's like, you know, we, we moved up to Canada in 87 or 88. Yeah. What? 87. Yeah. And I was there for 29 years, and, you know, she moved over there for a better life, and I'm back in Trinidad for a better life. You know, it's you it's just it's just crazy how how everything how everything worked. But again, that point that you made about the brain drain stopping, it's 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 tools like this that are gonna be able to bring back the talent. Because I kid you not, when I just moved here, I remember connecting to my aunt's Wi-Fi and Netflix was buffering. And I was like, yo, if Netflix is buffering, that means we don't have internet speed. For my needs, I might just have to go back on a plane and go back to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. But steadily over the last few years, since 2016, well, at least here in Trinidad, because I understand it was a bit earlier in Jamaica. But in 2016, we finally got fiber internet. So we finally are getting speeds over 100 megabits per second here in Trinidad. You can get up to almost a gigabit in Trinidad. Yeah. That wasn't that wasn't the case pre twenty sixteen. So the yeah, things that we are now able to do because of the technology, when you have the telco companies that are that are pushing the envelope and they're making the investment into the technology infrastructure, there are things that we could do now that have only been available to us in the past couple of years that were never available to us before. And I mean, even when you look at a company like like shout out to Aldwin, when you look at WePay, WePay started what twenty sixteen. You yeah. know, so pre-2016, we were struggling to get paid online. Yeah. But the gap is closing on being able to make money from the comfort of our comfort of our home. So when I talk to people, my perspective is, you know, somebody that grew up in Canada and has moved back to the Caribbean. And I want to showcase to people that, yo, we have a cheaper cost of living here in the Caribbean. You guys can move back. Be here. We have the technology to be able to, you know, whether it's we're, we're creating digital products or monetizing online, or if you guys want to get into physical product making, you now have tools like a carob shop where you guys can earn a living right from here and live that, you know, modern Caribbean lifestyle and have more money and have more respect because, I mean, you of all people know it, you know, being a person of color in North America. <laughs> has its challenges, especially when you, sure. you're an entrepreneur, you know, and just, and you know, I mean, we don't have to dive into it, but you know, have you yourself, have you, has that been a challenge for you or, or is that something that you haven't really had to deal with um, being a person of color in North America and building a business? That goes without saying. That's a- <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a given my brother that's yeah. a given i quick story i remember i was out in san francisco pitching to a venture capitalist and we're talking about the caribbean he's like the beaches like right you you want to raise money for the beaches like, <laughs> you know right. i i got nothing else to say brother right <laughs> I got nothing else to say, you know, but uh, yeah. it's, uh, that's a given. Yeah, that's a yeah. given. Nah. That's a given. And, you know, and, you know, and, and these are these are some of the conversations that, you know, we don't really have. So when you hear a lot of Caribbean folk that might have a business or they have a business, um, there's always that conversation of, you know what? Um, I'm not making it in Jamaica. I'm not making it in Trinidad and Tobago or St. Vincent. I need to move to North America to be able to make it. And they don't realize because they haven't, they've never had to deal with it. They don't realize that, hey, you're, you're moving into a place where people don't look like you. And there's a new challenge that you have to face when building a business. Oh, yeah. 99% of those people can't wait to move back home. They all Correct. struggling to move back home. You know, check it out. Check it out. They just can't because they 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 they're probably set already. Life is set. Kids is in, all of this stuff. They can't move. But but trust me, if, you know, give them five years. They're like, I'm done. I want to be out. 
<laughs> yeah, cool. No, and again, that, 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 I mean, that's a conversation for a later date. But you know what? Um, so we were talking carob shopper. So let's 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 move over to Amazon. So Amazon made that big announcement that they are mm-hmm. letting Caribbean countries. Um, they are yep. part of that new 85 uh, rollout of new countries on the Amazon platform to start selling. So, you know, as 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 a fan, as as a consumer, you know, not as a CEO for Carib Shopper, but, you know, what does that mean? What is Amazon now giving people the opportunity in the Caribbean to sell on the platform? What does that mean for the Caribbean? No, that's excellent for the Caribbean, right? So, like I said, it creates, Amazon is, what they are it creates it creates an opportunity for different types of businesses different types of people in the caribbean to now benefit from that digital transformation right we right. you know carib shoppers focus on merchants right? right but if i lived in jamaica right now shoot i could i could buy in in, in this olympics i could buy the the flags and 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 sell them online because people want to run up and down the street because we winning at, at at olympics right now right and sell it right on amazon right to your door right right the challenges that are going to be there are still surmountable right. but it's an excellent opportunity i've seen chefs who are who are doing uh amazon um what do you call them again um influencers right mm. who are on their Instagram, showing their recipes, and and on their recipe, there's a link to go buy the products they use in this dish. I mean, that's a vertical people weren't doing before. Like, Correct. You know what I mean? It's 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 opportunity, and the big thing now, you know, as you look at e-commerce, like what's happening is, so you know, look at it. You know, history is the best teacher, right? So, um, mom and pop stores popping up everywhere then right. the big box stores came and then the you know they took over and then and then the big um malls came right with the anchor brands coming in um and then the small stores occupying it and now we're going to a different system where that's online right, right? the big box if you want to call a big box retailer the walmart of of the 80s is now amazon right right now they're allowing they're allowing entrepreneurs to do direct to consumer if you if 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 you have a good track record, you can spin up a store on Amazon and sell T-shirts if you want to. If you have good designs yourself, yeah. without doing anything, you could write your book. You can sell it on Amazon, right? Yeah. You could you could be an influencer. You could buy products from Timbuktu and resell it on Amazon. You could, you know, it's it's available. You could resell phones that you buy in Trinidad and sell it on 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 Amazon, right? um chipsets right now if you if you could get your hands on video cards over 200 over 512 gigabytes yeah you make it money because every crypto guy is buying it because <laughs> everybody's mining you can sell a video card like the funniest thing the other day i noticed right yeah walk the best buy and i needed a video card nothing on the show nothing. they're like a, there's a black market going on with video cards like nobody's business right you could buy a video card for 200 dollars and sell that back for a thousand and that's the reality right and don't move from your desk right so that that's just a game changer in itself right yeah but again understanding the vehicle and working that vehicle in the race of life is what you have to do so understanding the vehicle that you're entering into right and so i I saw a a question here um you know does carib shopper charge um you know fees yeah, I, I was say, I was saving that question, but go ahead, talk about it, talk yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, we don't charge a listing fee. Why? Because again, or go back to our mission, right? Our mission is to help merchants be successful, manufacturers of product, no matter what it is, to be successful. We can't start burdening you before you start making a, making money, right? Especially in times like this, um, and that assists in your growth, right? Yeah. If if you're strong enough and you can you know, maintain an Amazon cost, go ahead. You can list on Amazon and list on us too. We don't care. Right. You understand? We want to to help the Caribbean export. If that's going to be with the influence of Amazon and, and what we do, we know what we do because we are localized in that market. Yes. Right? And we know what Amazon does. And yeah. we respect that. You understand? 
Yeah. And, and in many markets, just like the US, you have Amazon, you have Etsy, you have Fair, you have eBay. Yes. You have different players and different niches or niches specific. Yeah. Right. But the the Amazon coming to the Caribbean is, is huge. Right. Yeah. And and once they start localizing their service and where you know shipping is resolved and, and different things, no, you're talking about a digital transformation. What we've been talking about, cultural confidence changes. Yeah. Changes. And, that, and that's big. That I th I think one of the, one of the things that had me excited about Amazon, uh, most importantly, is the conversation that it's going to create, because people mm -hmm. who were never even thinking about e-commerce before, just hearing the name of Amazon coming in the Caribbean is now forcing people to kind of uh, begin asking questions and trying to figure out well, what does that even mean? You know, we 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 have such a consumer mindset, so uh, you had people just thinking. Well, I thought Amazon was always here. We could order on Amazon, but now it's forcing people to ask the questions of, you know, what does this mean that they're allowing us to sell? And because you are now asking those questions and trying to figure out how to sell on those platforms, you start to go through the process and you see, you know, where Amazon can work for you. But there's a big gap for our entrepreneurs and you're going to you're going to be able to tell us a bit better than, than me. But you know what those big gaps that Amazon comes with that Carib Shopper perfectly slides into. And one of those big gaps when people begin going through the process of figuring out how to sell on Amazon is people soon realize, wait a minute, I was costing about 3% to pay a payment, to pay a payment processor per transaction. Where are all these fees coming from? And then yeah. they start to realize that, yo, it, it, there's... There is a lot of there's a lot of financial uh, commitment that goes into utilizing the Amazon platform, you know. So I know that is a big area for Carb Shopper that you guys have solved. And again, you you, you touched on it just now, but you know, not wanting to put the the entrepreneur in debt before they even get started is is huge because I don't know how else we. We succeed if we don't have that flexibility to be able to do that. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. Right. So, I, again, not to not to be compared with Amazon. Right. But, you know, understand the vehicle. Uh, do your research. Right. You can't want to win without doing the work. And that's any entrepreneur. If yeah. you think entrepreneurism is is easy, uh, Karen Rose will tell you the late nights, the reading he has to do. The daily content he has to put out, the, the sleepless nights and and just everything else that's involved. Do the work. As as one of my mentors would say, do the effing work, right? <laughs> so you got to do the work and it doesn't come easy. So yeah. understand the people that you're entering to. Look yeah. what makes sense for your business, right? Yeah. Look what makes sense for your vertical. Because I remember the other day I was... Um, <clears throat> I was out in, uh, no, it was probably, shoot, it's not the other day, it's three years ago. I was out in, uh, what's that state called? Cheese. It's outside of Chicago, um, the Cheese State. Um, damn it. Um, I'll tell you. Anyway, whatever. I was in a Midwest state. Okay, let's leave it at that, right? right. Um, and Wisconsin? Um, yeah, Wisconsin. I was in Wisconsin right. three years ago. And I, I sat down in a meeting, I was talking, and said I was from Jamaica, and this guy said, listen, man, I'm a, I'm a big griller, right? And I go to Amazon, and I buy pimento wood from this guy that exports it from Jamaica. And I right. get straight pimento wood from Jamaica, and that was, that's what does my, 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 my pig. And that was, that's what does my, uh, my um, what's their favorite? Um, pulled, pulled um, you know, uh, beef. Pulled uh, pork. Whatever. Yeah, or, or, their, or their steaks, right? Right. Be talking all about pimento, wood, but we couldn't. Carb shopper couldn't move pimento wood, but pimento wood is like everywhere, right? Right. You could you you could become an entrepreneur by farming pimento wood and selling it on Amazon to people who are who are big barbecue guys, right? There's right. There's a vertical for everybody. I'm just giving that as an example. Yeah. Right. So know the vehicle, understand it, do the work. And there's a, a big differentiation, right? Garage shoppers focus on, on helping and building merchants, both small, medium, and large, right? Getting them into the digital world. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur 
and you want to resell a product, you want you want to become an influencer because you have a good following, you want to, you know, um, resell something, go right ahead. Yeah, thanks, Kerry. Brisket, right? So it's it's there's a you know different flavors to this and and like i said excited yeah there's 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 a lot and i mean you know uh, i see my guy keneal he's from jamaica as well he's talking about affiliates and yes that you know amazon is the biggest affiliate partner so again uh th there's opportunities for people who you know might not sell a physical product but being able to um just get into affiliate marketing if you're a content creator you know earning affiliate commissions again those things are huge that are going to be able to help you grow um and if you are somebody that has a physical product and maybe you again you don't have the the resources or you don't want to make the financial commitment to get on amazon listen jump on carob shopper build your business there grow that and start to generate money P i think people i think people uh when they're starting their business they, they look at where they want to be, and if they can't start where they want to be, they get hung up on just not starting anything at all. Yeah. And that's, and that's something that we need, we need to get past. Do what you can do right here, right now with what is available to you, right? Yeah. And Carob Shopper is a, is a growing platform. Just being able to get your products to them. And, and, and you know, touch on that for me. How does, how does the entrepreneurs, how do we get our products to you, what is that process like? So, depending on what country you're in, right? The entrepreneur, the sign up process is directly on on um, on carabshopper.com, right? It's become a merchant, right? After you fill out that process, our merchant success team, you know, contacts you and works with you to get your products on. But at that point, we make a decision whether your product, yeah, there you go, become a merchant, boom. There you go, right there, right dead center. Become a become a merchant. Um, you fill that that process out, and very quickly, um, you uh, you're you're able to get onboarded. Um, we work with you to make sure, like we said, your product imagery, your your descriptions are done properly. And depending on your type of product, we'll hold it in our fulfillment center, whether we whether in Trinidad or or Jamaica, or you'll 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 get that sweet feeling of that email notification saying, you know, you just sold this item and you have right. you know, 24 to 48 hours to get it to our fulfillment center, which we have a network um, locally to facilitate that and make that available. Right. So, you know, um, simplifying and because and and providing efficiency around it is is what we're aiming to do and we understand the challenges of, of the markets that we're I'll, getting into and I'll that's the it. difference we I'll understand it. it we live it let's let's take a let's take a browse through the website right so all of the prices are available there all of the all of the prices are in us dollars so i know yes. there are going to be some people that want to understand you know the the, the pay structure how does Carob Shopper make their money because there's no listing fees and how do they get paid? Simple, right? When we looked at disruption, Karan, right, and this is getting deep into it, you know, how was exports done over the last 20 years? Tell me. How was it done? Well, I've never exported yeah. a product, so I, I can't, I'm not the best person to ask, but I All would right, imagine so I would have had a product. I would have had to have gone into FedEx and have no, them wait. No, no. Exports are done via distribution. Okay. Right? So you make a product, right? And then you're going to have to find a distributor to go and sell your products to outlets internationally. Right. Got it? Right. And if you're not selling enough quantity, you can't get on that distribution distributor. So if you're not mm -hmm. doing, if you're not doing at least half of a, of a of a container or a container of product right distributors are not going to take you on right so there's right. A, there's a there's an, a barrier to entry so we're disrupting that market very slowly and right i don't i should have said that but it is what it is right um because we're giving you an option that you don't have to go through hubris meth um procedures to get distribution and i and i encourage any manufacturer if you you're ready for distribution go for it too because it's another it's another level right but 
we ask our merchants to list at wholesale prices and right. we work with and mark up to retail prices in the market that we're selling their product to. Right. Whether it be the US or Canadian market. And we take that uh, the difference, right? So no different than if they were to list, you know, put their products in a Massey store or a, or or a, or a true value store or um um any of the major retailers in Jamaica or Trinidad. No different. Right. But the difference here is we absorb the cost of logistics, payment processing and payment remittance to you and we also support your build out as you can see everything on the site is uniform that didn't happen by chance right I, I'm, I'm liking it and that's why as we're talking i'm, I'm going through it so people who are prospective uh, merchants looking to get on the platform have an idea as to what to expect but then we also have some people who are consumers from different countries that are looking at this saying yo i i, I think i want to purchase it looks good i want to jump on this platform to purchase, you know? So right. uh, to pick up where you left off, you know, uh, paying out in U.S. dollars, talk, talk to us about that, paying out to the merchants in the U.S. in the U.S. dollars. Well, it, it was it's a very simple decision, right? Um, and like I said, you there's one qualifying um, part. There's a one qualifying part here for the merchants. They have to have a U.S.-based account, whether at their local bank or internationally. Right. Right. They got to be able to receive U.S. dollars. Um, we did that because we want to give our merchants, again, the most competitive advantage they can. Half the time they're buying um, their raw materials in U.S. Right. There is a cost. A lot of times they got to do black market that aff that affects their <laughs> margins, that affects their profit. So right. If we sell to an international market we can now provide that as a benefit to our merchants wow listen i, I I'm, I'm upset that I, I i can't buy some of this yachty cbd oil and have it delivered to me right now i have aching joints <laughs> it's coming brother it's coming caricom is coming i'm i'm waiting for that you know and there's there's something that you guys are really really proud of and i know carrie's on the live <laughs> I um, mean, this is one of her passion projects. Talk to us about this bad boy right here. Ah, or gift boxes, right? Talk, so to, every talk month, about it. I got to talk about it. I got to talk about it. It's been a hit. You know, again, being deliberate about your actions as an entrepreneur, right? The market is not just a diaspora for us. The market is expanding that into different markets we want we we want jewish people to be buying caribbean products and have never and have, who have never come into uh, who have never took taken a plane and come into the region right how do we get that done by making attractive boxes put them together to fill people's curiosity right right um and and so you know you'll you'll start to see more boxes loaded um and we're, we're we're testing different boxes we're mixing products and making it benefit our manufacturers and we're pushing this you know in in commercial environments and to direct to consumer we're finding that these curated boxes are helping to open up the market um to people outside of the diaspora right, right? because that's the goal right because when you have somebody who in wichita never been to the caribbean i, I have a story um, we, um, we picked up, a, a company, a spa company from Missouri, um, never been to the Caribbean, never, um, they just saw one of our ads, saw one of the products that we did, tried one and is now actively selling it out of their spa for skincare. Um, right. one of our top sellers skincare products they're selling it in missouri of all places wow and this is non-caribbean and that that just you know when i keep on seeing them buy in bulk right product, i'm like i'm like is this a store i was like let's right. dig into this more i need i need to i need to realize what's going on here right come to find out it's a spa they tried it you know they got a they got it shared to them by a friend and 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 somebody you know vouched for it they tried it and now they're selling it out of their spa right now for skincare wow you know that's uh that's a that's a big deal for me that's when 
you know, we start to see the hard work that my team and everybody's putting in right. to really grow. Yeah, no, that's listen, that that's huge. That's huge. So what I what I want to do is, I mean, we're we're just browsing to the website. Um, anybody, if you guys tuning in live, if you have questions. Start to put your questions into the chat box now, and we will get those answered. The phone lines are officially open, so if you want to call in, you guys can call us either on WhatsApp or direct, and the phone number is 868-737-4358. That number is 868-737-4358. And you know what? I feel like I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to get a graphic done so you guys can see it. But I'm gonna just I'm gonna just blow it up for you guys. So if you guys want to call in, you can call in on WhatsApp. You can call in direct 868-737-4358, and we'll take your questions. Or you can drop your questions into the chat, and we will respond to your questions as well. So, Kadian, you know, what is on the platform, you know, what is what is one of your favorite um, parts on the platform? What is that thing that gets you most excited uh, that you see on the platform? Mm. If I was to pick. Mm. Um, hmm. It's a good question. I, I, I think there's so many aspects of it. Um, that I can't pick any one. I got to be honest with you. I'll tell you this. I, I love the fact that everything is uniform. It's clean. You know, I, I, I didn't understand it when I first moved here, but I understand when people say, you know, man, this doesn't even look like it was built in the Caribbean because it looks so good, which is a, which is, which is a stereotype that we have to change because so much amazing quality products and services do come out of the Caribbean. But I just love how the platform looks extremely clean. Um, I I love the fact that you guys have innovated with the curated boxes. Um, is this something that people could take on subscription? Like, is there a subscription service for the curated boxes where every month somebody gets like a, a curated package? Is, is that a service you guys offer on a subscription? No, we're riding slow right now. We, we, we're trying to build up. We're building. We're not trying. We're building, you know, the growth of it. And then eventually we'll offer subscription, right? Right. Um, it, it's everything in its time. And, 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 you know, building with effect, you know, is, um, is where we're at. All right. All right. So we have a couple of questions that just popped in. So let us take a look. So the first one is from Stevio. Stevio Selfio asked, does Carib Shopper integrate with WePay? Why? Yes, we do. We we uh, we we pay out um, through WePay in Trinidad, and as their uh, big launch coming up in in Jamaica, we will be doing that also. Sounds like some big plans. Sounds like some big plans that we pay. Michelle, Michelle asks, I have one, I have one of my products made outside and shipped to me in Trinidad and I brand it locally. From listing so far, I gathered that I don't qualify. So Michelle, good question. That that is actually incorrect, right? So we and we had to specify this. Caribbean owned, right? Are you are you Caribbean? You live in Trinidad. You're 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 making a product for the Caribbean community. That's one qualifying factor. And the second qualifying factor is that some part of that product is being done out of the Caribbean. And we have manufacturers, interestingly, that manufacture in Miami, but they're focused on the Caribbean region. And they're from Caribbean descent. That's that's a part of our culture. So you do qualify, Michelle. We look forward to uh, to meeting you and working with you to get your your uh, your products on. Perfect, perfect. And Michelle, Michelle had actually messaged me. Uh, I think last, I think yesterday, um, asking about Amazon. So this would be. I'm actually glad she jumped on um, because this would be a great. This is a great option for her to get her products that she makes into the U.S. market because I know that's why she was looking to jump on Amazon. So. You might have just took one from Bezos, Cadian. Hey, that's a big one to take one from, man. So I'll, <laughs> I'll take that. 
<laughs> um, Kenia's out of Jamaica. He said, did I miss the amount of countries that Carib Shopper is in? So uh, countries that we're in currently is Jamaica and Trinidad that we're exporting from. And we're in the U.S. market and we're opening back Canada, I want to say, very shortly. We're excited about that. Great. And then, um, you know, we expect to be in two other countries in the Caribbean uh, by uh, we're, we're going to start working on it in October of this year. So we got we got a lot of work ahead of us and we're excited about that. Um, had our first meeting uh, about, you know, one of the islands. And that's a that's a big mammoth of a task. So looking forward to that, man. Looking forward to that. Do we, do we get any hint? Do we get any hint? Can you tell us what kind of soca music to listen to, or what the <laughs> national dish or national rum? So, 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 so I'll, 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 I'll hint it this way because if I if I said any of those questions, they'd be <laughs> easy. To do. I, I'm just gonna say this that they're the, the next two big cultures out of the region, and 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 it, it's it's specific strong cultures out of the region. So I'll leave it at that. Cheese on um, bread. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Come yo i love it folks drop your questions there we're now into the q a session time it's it's so funny man when, again whenever you're having a great conversation the time flies it, you know the fact that we even hit uh, the hour and 15 minute mark it only feels that we've been talking for about for half an hour you know but again conversation's been going good so folks it's time we break out the jack now bro it's time we break out the jack <laughs> Yo, if you guys want to call in live and ask your questions live, 868-737-4358. Let me just put that number up for you guys again so you guys can see it. 868-737-4358. You guys can call in via WhatsApp or call in directly. Um, we're taking your calls live and you can ask your questions to Katie and live. Um, if you don't want to call in, but you have a question, definitely drop it into the chat. We'll bring it to the stage. We'll get it answered for you. Tonight, we're talking about, you know, Caribbean uh, product exportation. We've talked about how Carib Shopper is solving a lot of the issues that plague Caribbean businesses from getting online, receiving payment, and moving their products into the U.S. market. If you have... If, you, if you've also been, you know, hearing about Amazon, we've touched on, you know, what Amazon means to the Caribbean and some of the gaps that, that are presented. Um, <laughs> people right now are guessing where, what, what that next country is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I like, is, uh, I like is, it. I like it. I like it. You know what? Let, let's just put the question out to the audience. Like, what two other countries should we be going in into the, the beginning of fourth quarter? Let's hear what everybody is saying. Let's let's run a poll, Karen. Let's All run right. this poll. Yeah, let's see. I, I, so I'm I'm a guess. I'm gonna get it started. I I would guess, you know. I would guess Barbados. And I would guess Saint Vincent. Vinci, woo! Yeah. Right, I hear I hear I hear Vinci has some good vegetables. <laughs> Some good herbal vegetables. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Riri says, feeling it's Barbados and Grenada, my guess. She got one right. I'm not letting out the, the, the all right, hat. All right. All right. So we got one. We got one. Uh, I'm guessing Erica's asking, what about the UK? Are we, are we exporting to the UK? Uh, what Erica, are the plans? Erica, um, first quarter 2022, we're going to handle Brexit. Mm -mm! Well, first quarter 2022, that's a few months away. Hey, it's time to wait on no man, yo. That's, that's a fact. That's a fact. Que, uh, Quasi asks, can a Trini get paid in Jamaican currency? The man wants that JMD. Man, Quasi asked me a hard question. The answer is no, brother. You're going to have to check out WePay for that. That's <laughs> currency conversion right here, brother. <laughs> the man wants, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but the man wants JMD. <laughs> hey. Yeah. 
Uh, Wendy says Barbados. Stevio says definitely Barbados. Uh, Keneal's asking, there is an there is an export expo in China every year. Have you heard of it? Is is are you going to be a part of that? I think the the only um, the only show we're going to this year, uh, Keneal, um, and thanks for that info, is the uh, e-commerce conference in. Um, it's not in Vegas. It's in Chicago this year. I think that's the only um, expo we're going to this year. But um, China, maybe, maybe, maybe next year, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle says Guyana and Guyanese people wonder. People wonder pepper pot. They wonder chicken that's curry. Right. They wonder that's chicken right. curry. I don't know what chicken yeah. curry is. It's curry chicken. Erica says great because I guess I'm guessing Erica's looking to to move some products into into the uh, to the UK. That's right. Neighbor is saying Barbados and Grenada. Backside Grenada, Grenada getting up on the poles there, man. Like Barbados it. getting on the poles. There's a lot of Grenadians in Trinidad. Hmm. Apparently, Quasi really wants that Jamaican dollar. <laughs> um, da, 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 yeah. Yeah, so guys, again, we, we, have, we have a few more minutes. We have a few more minutes. So if you have your questions, drop them into the chat. If you guys want to call in, definitely give us a call. Uh, 737-4358. You know, if we at least take one phone call, that will be dope. If not, drop your questions into the chat and uh, let, let's get them answered for you guys. So what, you know, in, in, the, in the meantime, what, what's next? What can you let out the bag? What is the next, you know, thing that you're excited about for Carib Shopper? I think I think the big thing is is you know um, as we improve on our um, customer experience, right? Um, digging in into adding more value to the merchants mm-hmm. in some of the things we're gonna come out with very shortly is is going to is is going to is going to be a game changer for us, right? Um, we're looking to extend, you know, our project Grow Local, which was the original idea of Carib Shopper, right, right. into an actual um, what's the right term for it? Uh, an actual masterclass for merchants to be better at e-commerce. Right. right, and we're gonna look at different areas. So we, we're working on that, and we're get, we're getting close to that. And uh, you know, the, the day that we we get to launch that, it's going to be, you know, that information that that you talk about, Karan. Yeah. It's 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 imparting that, and and that would be as as or give back to the region, right? And of course, there's a benefit to us, but there's an overall benefit to manufacturers altogether, right? And um, Executing on that is is something that, you know, we started in 2020. We tabled as we saw the landscape, you know, shifting, and as we as we move towards, you know, getting into the fourth quarter of 2021, it's something that is um, top a key of mine to staff members and and a team. Right. You know, to have a team that believes in our goals as, you know, we have a heavy lift ahead of us, Karan. So, right. you know. Um, being able to do that and execute on that is 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 something that is going is very important to me. I'm looking forward to that. So um, I'll probably give you the uh, the exclusive. Well, of course, things things oh, had a bus. Things had a bus on Digipreneur Live. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> now nah, that's perfect. And you know what? I think I think we have uh, we've, we've answered. The questions that have come on that have come in. So, if there's mm-hmm. any questions further uh, for Carib Shopper, you know what is the best uh, way to reach out to a Carib Shopper member or even yourself uh, if they have any questions regarding Carib Shopper. So, real quick, um, <clears throat> Carib Shopper, go to our website. You see a uh, hello at Carib Shopper. Contact us. There's a phone number there, um, an email contact, or you can chat with our customer success team and ask, you know, any of the questions that you need answered. Um, you can all, you know, everybody, please go follow Carib Shopper at Instagram, Facebook. Um, 
and YouTube. Um, and there you can you can send us a DM or you can, um, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn or on, on Instagram uh, for business related items. Um, definitely. We're, we're, we're here to answer your questions. Perfect. Perfect. Katie, and I want to thank you once again for taking the time. By the way, Karen, stress, do, do me a favor. Stress, reach out to me for business related items. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the last time Katie came on and we talked to him, you want people wanted to put Katie in trouble. They wanted to put the man in trouble, reaching out to him. Well, it was business nope. too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they wanted Katie you know, to it's... sign up for the walk. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, nah, that's dope, man. Katie, again, thank you once again for you know taking the time to come and speak to the Digipreneur family. Um, you have a platform. You have a major solution that's going to be critical for us to grow our business, and we have so many uh, product makers across the region and i can't wait to see the next countries that you on board because you know on the program we have uh we have uh watchers and listeners from around the region and the first thing they always ask is you know when are we going to get some love out in you know barbados or st vincent or grenada and whatnot but again thank you for taking the time out if you guys have any questions definitely get in touch with cab shopper i i implore everybody who is a product maker in jamaica and in trinidad get your products on the platform it it costs you nothing to get started but it will give you everything once you play your cards right so kaden do you have any closing remarks for us before we close out today's show yeah my closing remarks is cultural commerce it's the next move you know we have to develop our cultural confidence we have to grow and the digital transformation is inevitable for the region and we want to play our part so you know we're here and we're going to do this together let's make it happen perfect katie and preston <laughs> mr thank rose you. thank you thank you sir thank you. The, the people should start calling you the joe rogan of the region that's what you are. <laughs> yeah, we, we we're trying. We're, we're trying. We're trying to get there. We're trying to get. We're trying to get to that. Joe no, we're not kid. trying. We're getting there. No trying. We're getting there. I I I receive that. I receive all of that. No we're trying. We're getting there. All right. Thanks again, Katie. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. The replay is going to be available if you happen to miss it. The replay is going to be available, you know, as soon as we log off, you're going to be able to watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, any of the platforms that we are streaming live on. The replay is going to be available as well. We have another program coming out on Thursday, so stay tuned for the details tomorrow as we launch that uh, the, the flyers and the artwork out um, on that show on Thursday, but we have another program then. And this is also going, this interview is also going to be on the Digipreneur FM podcast. So if you guys, you know, uh, you guys are on the treadmill, if you guys are driving, you guys are doing some other stuff, you're going to be able to listen in to the show during the podcast as well. I want to thank all of you for sticking with us, tuning in, dropping your questions, giving us your feedback. Before we go, please drop some flames in the chat. Let me know that you guys are here. Let me know that you enjoyed today's program. Drop some flames in the chat. I love to see when you guys give us that energy and let me know that you guys are here. So until Thursday night, 8 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, if you're out in the yard, that's going to be 7 p.m. for you. We're going to have another program then. And again, the replay will be available after this. All right. So thanks again, folks. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Keep good. Get your products on Carib Shopper. Start to sell your products. All right. It's Karen Rose. I'm out. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. Okay, bye. You've been listening to the Digiboss, Karan Rose. We hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, 
rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now go be great.